Hi, welcome to this presentation on how to integrate Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1 with Spectrum Protect for virtual environments and Spectrum Protect Server version 8.1. I'm going to be going over an overview of the integration and then we'll look at what pieces inside of the Spectrum Protect Server play a part in this as well as what inside the Spectrum Protect for virtual environment architecture. We'll then look how to link the Spectrum Protect Plus with the Spectrum Protect for VE. And finally, I'll show you how to do a backup from Spectrum Protect Plus to the Spectrum Protect server, and then how to do a restore from Spectrum Protect Plus from an image that's residing on the Spectrum Protect server. When we look at offloading Spectrum Protect Plus images to Spectrum Protect, this gives us a way to do long-term retention for those Spectrum Protect Plus backup images. We're able to seamlessly integrate the Spectrum Protect Plus environment with the Spectrum Protect for virtual environments and Spectrum Protect server environment. What will happen is we're gonna be sending snapshots from the Spectrum Protect Plus environment over to somewhere in the Spectrum Protect server environment. And you can choose if that's tape, if that's cloud, if that's VTL, if that's disk. And we'll be able to then retain those for longer term. When we look at the roles that the two pieces play, Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1 is going to utilize its vSnap server as its primary target for the Spectrum Protect Plus backups. We're then going to configure Spectrum Protect Plus to interface with Spectrum Protect. We're then going to have Spectrum Protect Plus set up to trigger the offload of its backups to the Spectrum Protect server. The Spectrum Protect Plus will record these offloaded backups in its own catalog. And when you want to do a restore of those offloaded backups, you'll also initiate that from the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. The Spectrum Protect Server version 8.1, it is going to be the target for the offloaded Spectrum Protect Plus images. And I should say, you don't have to offload all the images. You're going to be able to choose which images and how often you do those offloads. And it can be any of the Spectrum Protect Plus storage pools that are utilized for this offload. This current implementation of Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1 does require the Spectrum Protect for VE to be installed. And so Spectrum Protect for VE is going to be utilized to do the offloads via the data movers from Spectrum Protect Plus over to the Spectrum Protect server. The Spectrum Protect server will catalog and keep track of the images that it has stored in its infrastructure, and it will also be responsible for expiring off the images once their expiration policy has been met. There's two ways of offloading the images from Spectrum Protect Plus. The first method is that the offload is happening from the hypervisor directly. We are going to utilize an incremental backup when we're sending the data via the Spectrum Protect data movers out to the Spectrum Protect server. The alternative method, we're taking existing backup images from Spectrum Protect Plus from its vSnap storage appliance and sending those through the data movers out to the IBM Spectrum Protect server. These would then be a full backup. When you utilize this methodology, you're not impacting the production virtual machines because you are using images that have already been backed up. So when you look at which methodology to choose, some of the things you'll want to consider is, first of all, if you don't want to impact your production virtual machines, then perhaps using method two is a better case. You also want to look at things like speed. Depending on the type of storage that's underneath your vSnap storage appliance, it might be faster to do the backups using method two, or if you have better disk, perhaps it's faster to utilize method one. Spectrum Protect requires a separate Spectrum Protect for virtual environment server for every vCenter server. You'll need to install and configure as many Spectrum Protect for virtual environment servers as there are vCenter servers registered to the Spectrum Protect Plus environment. And you want to create a one-to-one -one relationship between the vCenter servers and the Spectrum Protect servers when you're linking the two. The Spectrum Protect for VE data movers will 
discover the correct vCenter and Spectrum Protect servers that will be utilized to offload the VM backups to. Spectrum Protect offload is currently only available for VMware images, not for the Hyper-V backups that Spectrum Protect Plus also does. Since the Spectrum Protect Plus and the Spectrum Protect server are both tracking which images are being sent to the Spectrum Protect server, and since the Spectrum Protect server is controlling the inventory and managing the expiration of the different versions from its storage pools and containers, the Spectrum Protect Plus and Spectrum Protect servers will reconcile with each other to make sure that their database catalog inventories are up to date. Each time after a Spectrum Protect Plus backup, the Spectrum Protect Plus will use the VM CLI queries to look at what's in the Spectrum Protect inventory. The Spectrum Protect Plus will then remove from its catalog any of the images that were expired off from Spectrum Protect. So let's look at which portions of the Spectrum Protect server are being utilized. We will be tracking the Spectrum Protect Plus images in our databases and logs, and we'll be storing the data anywhere in our storage hierarchy, whether it is the legacy storage pools or the new container pools. With the legacy storage pools, that would be able to capitalize on a lot of the tape technology, as well as doing things like migration from one of the storage pools to the other. If you choose to utilize the new container storage pools to back those Spectrum Protect Plus images up to, you could then get the inline dedupe as well as the server-side compression and encryption. On top of that, you could also capitalize on cloud containers as well as disk containers to store the backups into. So you can see here in our example, we've chosen to do an AWS pool, which is an Amazon storage pool off-premise cloud. The nodes that are utilized to do the backups are the same ones that are created when the Spectrum Protect for Virtual Environment Wizard is run. We're primarily going to be interested in the Data Mover node. If you were to look at our nodes here, this is the one we'll be looking at, this AUS VE DM Austin demo node. The policies that are set up in Spectrum Protect and associated with the nodes are what's going to govern where the Spectrum Protect Plus images are stored, as well as how many versions are kept and for how long. If we go and look in the policies, we've set up this Spectrum Protect Plus management class. It shows that it's going to this AWS pool that I showed you, and we'll be keeping two backup versions out there. We're also utilizing Spectrum Protect for VE when we're doing the Spectrum Protect Plus 10.1 integration. This is the whole VE architecture, but what we're primarily concerned with is this portion right here, the vStorage backup server, because we're going to be using the data mover in conjunction with Spectrum Protect Plus. We're not going to be utilizing the file level restore interfaces or the web browsers or the so the data mover is critical because it's what's actually moving the data from the data protection from VMware environment over to the Spectrum Protect server. In your Spectrum Protect for VE environment, you might have more than one data mover. We're going to be looking at the first instance of the data mover that was installed on your vStorage backup server. So let's go ahead and look at how to link Spectrum Protect Plus with Spectrum Protect for VE. Inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface, you're going to go into the hypervisor, backup, and then click on the manage vCenter. Inside of this manage vCenter, you want to click the link to IBM Spectrum Protect and check that box right there. You're then going to provide the vStorage backup server address. And this is basically the machine on which the VM CLI is installed. And if you do have a multi-data mover environment, it's going to be the first data mover. So here we have the DNS address. You're going to tell the operating system type of that vStorage backup server. And then you can either choose to use an existing Spectrum Protect Plus user, or, and most likely this will be the case, you're going to provide a vStorage backup server username. And this is going to have to be a local admin with logon as a service capability for the vStorage backup server that you specified above. 
And finally, you'll specify the password. If you were to check the use existing user box, you would have a drop down where you could choose an existing Spectrum Protect Plus user that you had defined previously inside of the user interface. The second step in linking Spectrum Protect Plus with Spectrum Protect Server is you're going to go into the service level agreement policies. So click on the service level agreement policies and then choose either an existing policy or create a new policy. So in our case, we created this AWS offload policy. Then underneath the IBM Spectrum Protect offload section, you'll want to check the offload to IBM Spectrum Protect box. And then you'll want to choose the frequency from which you want to offload it. And this can either be every minute, hour, day, week, or month. And you'll specify at which time. Now, when you specify this, do you want to make sure that it's not occurring at the same time the Spectrum Protect backups are going on? So do pick a, a separate time from that. And then think about how often you want to be sending a version over to the Spectrum Protect server. Finally, you'll need to check this leverage most recent backup box here. If that is not checked, then the backups are coming directly from the vSphere using the Spectrum Protect for VE data mover and being sent to the Spectrum Protect server. This was the method one I showed you on the diagram. And this will be an incremental forever backup. With this method, we're actually accessing the live virtual machine. Versus if you do check that, then we will pull a backup image from the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap and send that as a full backup over through the Spectrum Protect for VE data mover to the Spectrum Protect server. This will not require a new snapshot of your production virtual machine. So once you've set up the link inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface, you can either wait for it to do the scheduled backup that you set up, or if you want to do an on-demand backup, you'll go into System, and then you'll go to Job Monitoring. You'll choose the job that's been set up. Here's our VMware AWS offload. Click the Actions button, and then click Start. So assuming you had checked Leverage Most Recent Backup, which means it's accessing the backup that's existing in the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap, then you will want to check IBM Spectrum Protect Offload and click Next. If for some reason you had not yet done a vSnap backup, this would come back with an error code and say, oops, you haven't yet done a vSnap backup. And so in that case, you would have to first do the backup to vSnap, and then you could offload it to Spectrum Protect. Inside of Spectrum Protect Plus, if you want to monitor that backup job, you can go into Systems, Job Monitoring, and here you'll see the job was started, and you can see the different information about that job. Likewise, you can go to the vSphere web client. You'll see a temporary VM being created, and that down here under Recent Task, you'll see it being backed up. If you were to go to the Spectrum Protect for VE data mover, you would notice two services. The first is the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus agent that's used for remote management. And the second is the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus agent script, which is used to execute the VE backups and restores. If you go to the Spectrum Protect Server's Operations Center and you go into the Server's Details Active Task area, you will see the client that's associated with the data movers receiving data. In this case, it's still waiting, but it'll rapidly be receiving data. Okay, so that is showing us what a Spectrum Protect Plus backup, where it's doing an offload to the Spectrum Protect server looks like. Now let's look at how you do a restore from the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. You'll go to Hypervisors. You'll click on the Restore. You'll search up the name of the virtual machine you want to restore. When you do that, you'll see all of the different images that are available. And you'll see the images that are both in the Spectrum Protect Plus vSnap, as well as any that have been offloaded to the Spectrum Protect server. Now, if an image resides in both places, like this one does right here, we can see from November 21st, we have one in the Spectrum Protect and one in vSnap. You would want to probably restore from vSnap, because that's local. But since the Spectrum Protect offload is usually for long-term, 
it's more than likely that your vSnap images will have expired off. So you'll check the IBM Spectrum Protect offload image. Then you click the little up arrow here in blue and that will add the image to your restore list. Then if you click the restore button down below, you'll next be able to choose some of the options. Now these options include things like the destination, and the restore type and network settings. And these are all basic Spectrum Protect Plus settings. One thing to note is when you are doing a restore from the Spectrum Protect server, we're actually bringing back all the bytes and blocks are being restored from the Spectrum Protect server. So this test restore type would not be supported with the offloaded images. You can monitor the restore jobs from the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface by going to job monitoring and then clicking on the specific job, the on-demand restore. Likewise, you could go to the Spectrum Protect side and you could see in the operation center an active task where that client once again, the data mover client is going to be sending data back to the Spectrum Protect Plus environment. And finally, you could go into your VMware vSphere web client. And once again, you'll see a temporary VMware image being created. And in the recent tasks, you'll see a restore of that virtual machine occurring. That's all there is. It's very simple to set up the integration between your Spectrum Protect for virtual environments and your Spectrum Protect Plus environment. Those offloads can happen on a scheduled basis or you can do an on-demand offload. And doing a restore is just as simple by going into the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. You can very rapidly restore offloaded images. Thank you very much.